Hello students, in this video we'll see how to solve the catenary problem using a second order nonlinear differential equation. The catenary problem is a classic problem for mechanics. It states the following, it says suppose that a cable with uniformly distributed weight W is suspended between two points. What shape does the cable make? In particular, what curve does the cable make? And so the idea of the problem is the following. What we're going to do is we're going to draw this. There's the y-axis. There is the x-axis. And then let's say that this is the lowest point over. I'm going to say the lowest point on the cable, because the cable naturally comes to a lowest point. I'm going to suppose that lowest point is one unit above the x-axis. So that's the lowest point on the cable. And the cable does something like this. It hangs between a point. There's my endpoint B. There's the other point over here, A. That's where the cable's going to be suspended. And then over here, there's just an arbitrary point, P, on the, on the curve that we have over here, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write down a couple of different parameters that we're going to need in the problem. So if, X, if this point, P, is X, Y, then we're going to let S be the arc length parameter. Of course, we know the arc length parameter is defined by its derivative, namely that ds dx is just going to be the square root of 1 plus dy dx quantity squared. Okay, that's what the derivative of the arc length parameter is. That's something we learned in Calc 2. All right, and so now um, there are several different forces that are acting on this point, right? And so on this point, there is the weight times the arc length parameter, weight the uniform weight times the arc length parameter, that's one force acting on that point, it's the force of gravity moving down. There's other forces over here, there's a tension over here at that point, there's a tension, I'm going to call that tension over here T1, and that tension can be decomposed into a vertical and a horizontal component using this angle theta. And then there's a horizontal, and since this is the lowest point on the chain, there is a horizontal tension over here T2 that's going that direction, okay? So I'm going to balance out all these forces in the standard way we do so, right? Of course, what's the vertical component of the tension at T1? T1 is the overall magnitude of the, of the tension. So it's going to be T1 co uh, sine theta is the vertical component of this thing. That has to be W times the arc length parameter S, okay? That will balance this part of the, this part of the force and this part of the force, so those have to be equal. And then over here, I have that T1 cosine theta will have to be T2 the horizontal component of the force. So we have these two equations over here. Beautiful, because now what we can do is we can divide these equations by one another. And if we divide these equations by one another, what do we conclude? We can conclude from this that if I divide the top equation by the bottom equation, that the tangent of theta, the tangent of theta is going to be Ws over T2. Okay. Great. Now, we happen to know, so I'm going to make an assumption over here. Just like I assume that the height above the x-axis was 1, I'm going to assume that the uniform weight over the tension T2 is equal to 1 to make my calculations easier. If you don't like those things, you can call this number over here A, and you can call this number over here B, and then proceed with the A and B in your calculation. You'll get, the, you'll get a similar structured formula. It just won't look nearly as nice as the final answer I'm going to get. Great. So that tells me that the tangent of theta is equal to S. Of course, tangent of theta is really dy dx, because that's the slope of the curve. So this is really dy dx, so this tells me that s is equal to dy dx, because the tangent of theta is the slope of the curve at that point. And so what's the slope of the curve at that point p? The slope of the curve at that point p is just dy dx, the derivative. Great. Let me do the derivative with respect to x of, x of this. So that tells me that ds dx is equal to what? ds dx is equal to the second derivative d squared y dx squared. Great. And I know that ds dx is given by this formula over here, so we arrive at our second order differential equation. 1 plus 
dy dx quantity squared, okay? And so now as is standard in this business, let me do the following trick. I'm going to write p as dy dx, just to sort of save myself some writing. So what this differential equation is, is this is really p prime, where prime is derivative with respect to x, p prime, the second derivative, is equal to the square root of one plus p squared. And if I divide over this through, I'm gonna have what? So this will tell me that p prime over the square root of one plus p squared is equal to one. That's really nothing more than saying the second derivative, it's basically the same exact structure of the p's instead of dy dx's. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply both sides of the equation by p. So I'm gonna put a p over here, I'm going to put a p over here. That doesn't change anything at all. But now this side over here is a perfect derivative, right? This side over here is the derivative with respect to x of just 1 plus p squared square rooted. So that tells me that the derivative with respect to x of the square root of 1 plus p squared is equal to p. And so of course now we can integrate this immediately and conclude from this equation that the square root of 1 plus p squared is equal to what? Well, p is dy dx, so when I integrate this, I'm just going to get a y. Plus what? Plus a constant c. Great. Okay. So now I have to solve this differential equation. It's a first order differential equation, which is nonlinear. And so the first observation I'm going to make is that when I know that the slope of the, I know that p is equal to zero when at the point x equals zero. So if I plug in x equals zero over here, so if I plug in x equals zero, what's this equation going to tell me? At x equals zero, dy dx is equal to zero, so p is equal to zero. So this equation is going to tell me that the square root of one plus zero squared is equal to the y height at zero, which is one. You can see why it shows one there, plus a constant c, which tells me that constant c can be chosen to be zero. So that constant c is equal to zero. Now I'm going to solve this differential equation. This differential equation is equivalent to one plus p squared is equal to y squared by squaring both sides, and therefore p squared is y squared minus one. And at least in the first quadrant over here, we see that dy dx is increasing. So if I take the plus or minus square root of this, I'm gonna get that p is equal to plus or minus the square root of y squared minus one. But I'm gonna only look at this curve in the what? In the positive direction. By symmetry, I can also run the same argument when I have a negative sign over here. And of course, p is dy dx. So now, this is equivalent to dy dx is equal to the square root of y squared minus one, which is separable. It is dy over the square root of y squared minus one is equal to dx. And now that's separable, I can integrate this. What this tells me is this is gonna tell me by integration that what this is gonna give me is this is gonna say an antiderivative of this thing is inverse hyperbolic cosine. So this tells me that cosh inverse of y is equal to x plus c now I know that when x is equal to zero, y is equal to one, and the inverse cosh, when x is equal to zero, y is equal to one, and the inverse cosh of one is gonna be zero. And so what that tells me in particular is that tells me that the c over here is also equal to zero. So by solving for y, what can we conclude? We can conclude that when I take the cosh of both sides, that this curve over here is y is equal to the hyperbolic cosine of x or the cosh of x, and that is the solution of the catenary problem. Now, if I had a and b in the problem, I would have to do a probably a one over what? If I had to do like a one over b, cosh one over b, plus minus a, based on the structure of the equation, but the a is only going to shift this, the a is going to shift this hyperbolic cosine up or down based on how large it is, and this b over here is going to scale the hyperbolic cosine by the right parameter to make sure that it satisfies the cor correct tension to weight ratio. But the overall general structure, the shape of this catenary curve is always a hyperbolic cosine. Thank you very much.